Hey everybody, welcome to Online Grind, Volume 4. Uh, my name is Benton Blakeman. I am the founder and co-creator of the Hand History Lounge, along with my friend Andrew Nimi. And today, I'm going to bring you another video of me playing poker online. Um, going through some concepts that you should be thinking about when you play live poker. Um, <clears throat> going over some concepts, hopefully, that we also go over uh, in the Hand History Lounge, which if you haven't been to it before, you can check it out at www.handhistorylounge.com. The Hand History Lounge is a subscription training site. Uh, I call it training site loosely. It's not a traditional training site. It is just more of a site where um, you can post your hand histories and have them reviewed by pros. Uh, so instead of just watching like you're going to do today, um, <clears throat> in a traditional manner, you're going to get to actually go over your own hands that you played and see where your leaks are, and hopefully uh, fix it from there and become a better poker player for it. So anyway, we're going to play four tables of 5 cent, 10 cent, no limit today, on WSOP.com. Now, why are we playing so low? Well, if you guys are familiar with poker in Nevada, um, legalized poker, WSOP.com does not have many big games. Um, and uh, especially at this time of day, I'm playing at 1 in the afternoon. Um, so I just threw these games up here. I'm going to try to play at nine-handed tables because I want to mimic um, the same way that we would play in a casino, which is mostly nine-handed, very few uh, six-max games. So anyway, that's the way we're going to play today. Um, this top left table, we're going to go ahead and label them table one, table two, table three, and table four. Table 1 is actually a 25 cent, 50 cent no limit. Um, the rest are 5 cent, 10 cent. If we bring up our lobby here, we will see that uh, as far as the bigger games going, a couple of heads up 5, 10 no limits, a 6 max, 1, 2, a uh, couple 6 max, 50 cent a dollar. So this quarter 50 is the biggest nine handed they have going. Other than that, it's uh, just 5 cent, 10 cent. So Hopefully, WSOP.com will pick up once New Jersey joins, but anyway, that's not really the point of the video. The point is just to go through some hands and, uh, and see what it, what it looks like, see what it do. So, let's kick it off. Table 2, open raise with 6s from under the gun to 3x, pretty standard. Uh, table 1, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze versus a cutoff and a button. Cutoff raise, button call, I'm going to tend to go about 5x here. Uh, 5x plus a little maybe <clears throat> I tend to size 4x out of position but with the call I want to go 5x with the sixes we're gonna go ahead and call heads up here 37 in the pot I'm gonna go ahead and down bet uh, looks like with the three to a straight three to a flush I'm gonna start off with a bet planning on going multiple streets sometimes so we have a pretty good range advantage there but we just go ahead and win um, the sixes we called to set mine and we didn't hit the flop so we got out the way over on table four we have two kings versus one limp we're gonna size up to 4x get called in two spots um, you know it's not great when an ace comes when you have two kings but definitely better when two aces come uh, as far as the flop I personally don't see a ton of reason to bet I think I'm per perfectly fine checking back I'm not worried about another overcard hitting I'm either way ahead or way behind in a spot like this so I'm gonna go ahead and check under up my hand and look to get some value later in the hand with King Jack suited versus a button limp over here on table two um, I'm gonna raise for value totally with the flop I have no problem checking and folding when I have such little equity back down to table four now the blind bets uh, the next player calls we call behind um, I think that we're gonna go ahead and call with the Kings although I don't love it I'll be honest I think he's gonna have an ace a fair bit of the time a hand like a7 suited or something like that that he called a raise with limped in and called a raise with but um, Considering he's only bending half the pot, and 
Uh, we beat a queen. I'm going to go ahead and make the call, but... And both of them had ace, ace three and ace nine. So, flop better, Benton. But that's okay. Uh, was not not a big deal. Had it gone bet from Dan and call from Diane on the river, I would have folded the kings. But once Dan checks and Diane bets, uh, you know, people do weird things. Maybe they're betting a queen there. Um, I don't always three bet here on table one versus an under the gun raise with two tens but first a min raise I'm I'm fine just go ahead and three betting especially when he's playing like 60 blinds deep um, ace high flop the button also called just gonna look to check hope to get further in the hand but not too thrilled about this spot Would be looking to uh, to still check the turn had it checked to me here. Uh, versus a bet, betting it to two people, I'll just go ahead and fold. Table three, king seven suited on the button. All right, raise the pot. We're going to isolate the limper. Uh, it's something you should be doing in later position. Against one limper, uh, you should definitely be getting more aggressive, isolating that limper, hoping to get heads up, and uh, winning a lot of pots post-flop. So this board hits him a whole lot more than it hits me. Um, and I think you can do a whole bunch of things here. I think you can bet or you can check. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start with a bet because I don't know how aggressive these guys get. If I were in a higher limit game, I definitely may mix in a whole lot of checks with my straight draws because I'm just going to get check raised very often on this board. I, I really don't have no idea how these small games play online. Uh, I'm, I only play them for the purposes of the video. Um, first, a pot size bet and a call here. I'm just going to go ahead and fold nines. Queen 10 offsuit on the cutoff. Not like it's a great hand, but it plays perfectly fine as a squeeze down on table 3. It looks like it have an under the gun limper. <laughs> With uh, 40 big blinds, go ahead and squeeze. If he re-raises, we'll have to fold, but, you know, that happens. Over on table four, suited broadways play really well as calls in position. Um, so, versus this hijack raise, we're just going to call the button with queen jack of diamonds and take a flop in position and get a pretty sexy one so far with a flush draw. With the queen 10 uh, versus a half pot C bet with no backdoor flush draws, I would just go for a fold. And with the queens, we're going to open raise on table 2. Call the flush draw in position on table 4. Get over called by the big blind. Turns not too spicy for us. Not too spicy at all. Um, with the sixes over on table three, we'll just make the call. Top set on table two. As the pre-flop raiser, pretty dry flop, but I still, I used to slow play. I still prefer to go ahead and, and make a bet now. Um, checking the sixes back. Table three. Over on table four, I'm just going to fold with the third player in here. Chance of him check raising. I don't love it. I'm not sure if I get paid off. Because uh, my hand looks exactly like a flush draw when I call twice, especially if they, after the ace coming. So I think I'm okay with a fold, as I am on table three with a terrible straight draw. Uh, also okay with a fold. here um, so this week in Las Vegas we had CES which is the consumer electronics show in town 
Um, brought in a whole lot of people. Made the games pretty interesting. Uh, changed my schedule around a little bit. Started playing some early morning shifts. Um, and overall, things things have gone okay. Um, there was a lot more games than I thought that there would be. Down on table three, I'm just going to open the six, seven of diamonds. I think it's pretty standard from a early middle position. Versus really... In a really tough game, you could probably find a fold, but I think it plays okay. Um, I'm going to play extremely straightforward versus this short stack. Uh, he's only got 27 big blinds. Flop a straight draw on a pretty nasty board. Uh, pretty much have no showdown value. I'm just going to make one small bet and hope that he just has absolutely nothing. Just I'm just strictly trying to fold out his ace high and king high hands that have no clubs. Um, for like a third pot size bet, because I definitely can't check call with this hand. Uh, can't check call with it, and definitely don't want to check raise it, don't want to get it in. Um, so I'm just going to fold. On table one, king five of spades, open raise, get three bet pretty large, pretty easy fold. Uh, in general, try not to call three bets from out of position um, with many hands, and definitely not with uh, very weak hands like a king five suited. So yeah, lots of action this week in Las Vegas. Um, if you guys watch uh, the previous videos of both myself, well, with myself and Andrew Nimi, uh, calling out shows, uh, we've done two so far. We've taken a, a quite a lengthy break, uh, mostly due to Andrew getting out his uh, vlog number 100, which if you haven't watched it, it's just amazing, but I'm sure all of you have. Um, if not, check it out. Um, but... Hopefully we will get back to that very soon, and within the next few weeks, uh, we will have uh, Calling Out Episode 3 for you guys. Over to Table 1, Queen Jack Spades from middle position. Definitely warrants opening the pot. I'm going to go ahead and make it 3x, and get called by the small blind, and we flop top pair. Pretty cool spot. Um, I think that... You could definitely make an argument for checking some queens, and this would make a perfectly fine check. I am tending to see bet a little bit more lately, so I'm just going to go for a, a right about a half pot see bet. Ten's not a great card. Obviously, eight nine gets there. Um, I don't know how aggressive these games are. Again, I, I imagine they're not extremely aggressive, so I'm actually going to go for a bet here. Um, and be fine if I have to fold to a check raise, but pretty much just going for a bet with plans on checking back almost all rivers when he calls the turn. Also, this denies equity to hands like 7-8, um, and let's see what else. Denies equity to hands like 7-8, or if he did call the flop with hands like 9-10, a lot of value to be had too when he decides that he wants to call with the, the pair plus straight draw. Over on table three, I check my option in the big blind with 10-9 offsuit, flop middle pair three ways, check the flop, checks through, ace came on the turn, still checking, now I'm just trying to get the show down, and we do, and we are good. A lot of times we need to assess the value of our hand and realize whether it's a hand that we're really looking to put more money into the pot with, or whether it's a hand that we're just trying to get the show down with so we can realize the full equity of the hand by showing down the hand. Um, a lot of times hands like third pair kind of fit the bill for, for that. Over on table three again, we have ace-king offsuit facing a limp. Uh, we're in the small blind, so we're going to pot plus a blind or so. And take it from there. He calls, we get a pretty nice flop, ace high. Going to start off with a bet. I would tend to go uh, right about half pot, a little bit less than half pot, maybe. And I'm looking to bet three streets, assuming the board doesn't run out weird. Uh, six is not a huge concern. I don't think he floats a ton of sixes. So I'm going to start going for value now. And hope to just get called down by another ace. An uh, ace-jack type hand. Again, queen is not a huge concern to me. Because I don't think he's calling... Um, I don't think he's calling with queens. The problem is... We don't get paid off a ton here, so I think I'm going to go super small. 
looking for value from an ace and also looking to bluff catch and maybe induce him to raise. I think a lot of times he just ends up with a hand like ace nine or something. And I, I think that he was happy before. Um, with the threes, I'm going to call the men raise over here on table four. I'm going to get back to the ace king hand in a second. Uh, pretty good points. So I think he's just got a middling ace here. Ace eight, yeah. So <clears throat> if this queen doesn't pair on the river, I'm actually going to go rather large, 80%, because I think he's going to assume that mostly he either has the best hand or he's going to be chopping with aces and sixes with the queen kicker. When the queen comes, now his kicker all of a sudden comes back into play, and I just don't think we get called by a big bet on the end, so I decide to bet about third pot on the river just to, to get value from my hand. Uh, with the threes, it went from 20 to 95 with a call here. I think that we can go ahead and set mine profitably uh, as last player to act. And we missed the flop, so we're just going to go ahead and fold. But yeah, that's a pretty good example of um, ranging your opponent, knowing that the six doesn't really change the hand. People are just not going to float a six on an ace-queen flop. Um, and when he calls the turn, he just pretty much always has an ace with a worse kicker. Uh, pretty unfortunate river card for us. But I just don't think he has many queens. If he would have raised the river versus my tiny size, I just have to call because uh, I size tiny on purpose. I size tiny for two reasons. I size the river so small, um, 135 into 450, uh, both to get value from a hand like he had, ace nine, or to possibly have him turn a hand like jack 10 if he had decided to call twice into a bluff. Um, and sometimes people just spaz, raise, and ace because they don't know what else to do and they see such a small bet. So, um, But you have to be pretty sure. You have to, you know, it kind of goes back to the turn knowing that I bet relatively big on the turn, and he's just not going to float twice with a, a queen in his hand too often. Not to mention he limp preflop, and people limp ace x a whole lot more often than they'll limp queen x. So the fact that he limped and called a raise um, tells me he doesn't have a big queen because he probably raises king, queen, queen, jack. Um, and I block king, queen somewhat. Um, so his most likely hand is just going to be an ace that he limped in with. Table four, queen seven offsuit. I'm all about defending the big blind versus raises, but this just seems a little too loose to me. Queen jack offsuit on table two. I will open from the low jack. I would have folded from one spot over to the right, but the uh, low jack is where I definitely start opening up my range and, and uh, playing a few more hands, a few more speculative hands. <laughs> King six deuce. I'm gonna go ahead and check the flop. Um, and if it checks through, I may delay a c bet. But multi way, I would definitely con consider checking hands like king jack or king ten here that I raised. Somewhat, so I have no problem checking this. And as played, bet call, pretty easy fold. So part of the reason I make these videos uh, is to help promote Andrew and I's uh, site, the Hand History Lounge. So just going to throw it out there. Everybody who's in that land the lounge so far is really loving it. We're getting great feedback, some great discussion, and the players are just generally getting better. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, go over to www.handhistorylounge.com. Check it out. Join for a month. See if you get something out of it. Give us some feedback. If there's things you like about it or you don't like about it, let us know. Um, over on table four, going to go for a pot size raise on the button. It's going to look like a squeeze. No matter what happens, I would be perfectly fine getting it all in here because my hand looks so much like a squeeze. Um, when we win, I mean, this is a great result. We just win like seven big blinds without having to see a flop. So we realize 100% we get 100% equity from the pot with a hand that obviously 
doesn't have 100% equity to win the pot, especially seven ways. So anytime you can pick up free money without seeing a flop, it's just a huge win, especially when it's a handful of, of big blinds. But yeah, so check out Hand History Lounge. Let us know what you think. We're definitely open to feedback. We love helping. We love giving back. And uh, we just love talking poker. We love poker. Everybody loves poker, right? Over on table three, nine, ten suited in the big blind, getting a discount. Let's see a flop. Over on table two, we're going to check the flush draw on table three. Over on table two, I'm going to just go ahead and, and go for the squeeze and be okay getting it in versus a, a 60 blind stack here. Um, I'm going to have to start betting now on table three. It checks through. We turn a flush. No reason to try to get tricky. Um, and we win that one. Table two, kind of tricky spot. Uh, we're going to check the flop. We have showdown value. We beat all, all smaller pairs. Going to go for a flop check call. I think that will shut down a lot of his bluffs, and hopefully we can get to showdown. Uh, if he continues betting, we're going to have to fold. But kind of interesting because, uh, you know, he just called the raise, and... This is unfortunate here. Um, I actually think I'm going to turn my hand into a bluff because ace queen gets there and I need queen jack to fold big time. Um, I mean, I was pretty happy that we we're beating queen jack. Now I'm pretty much going polar to where I have a hand like two kings, two jacks, or ace queen. And we get it through. Uh, I mean, we may have had the best hand there with nines, but. Uh, that'll be an interesting one to go back and check out. Um, I got lost in the nines hand, so honestly, I do not know what happened in the king-queen on table three. But I do know that I'm not a fan of the way the board's looking, so I'm just going to check down and hope to win with king high, which I do. Table two, <clears throat> we'll get back to the other hand in a second. On table two, um, ace-ten offsuit from the small blind plays extremely poorly. Especially versus a raise and a call, and especially multi-way. I think this is a mistake a lot of amateur players make, is they see an ace and a ten and want to play it. Calling here is just just a negative, negative EV play. So we're going to have to fold that one. Ace-queen, on the other hand, on table three. Very, very plus EV to go ahead and play this hand in position. I'm going to raise it about 3x, cutoffs open. And we get called... Um, without backdoor diamonds, I'm fine checking. Looking to get the showdown. Um, I think I'm going to fold ace-queen here, but I definitely would be calling um, ace-king. I think when I start calling all 16 combos of ace-queen off, along with all 16 combos of ace-king off... I'm sorry, uh, all 16 combos of ace-queen, 12 offsuit, 4 suited, and all 16 combos of ace-king, uh, suited and offsuit. I think I just start calling ace-high too much. Uh, so, we'll go ahead and fold some of our ace-queens. If we had ace-queen with a diamond, since there were two diamonds on the board, maybe you can consider calling, and you could always turn your hand into a bluff on the river. Ace-king offsuit, I'm going to pot, and... Open raise the button with the jack ten of clubs on table two. If we get three bet by the big blind, we will be defending jack ten offsuit in position. Um, not always defending it out of position. Ace king off on table four. Pretty bad flop, especially against a big blind hand who would be calling with a extremely wide range. So we're just going to really just trying to get the showdown here. Uh, still no need to really bluff. Uh, I think a little bit too strong. Maybe a uh, ace-10 offsuit with ace of hearts we can consider bluffing. Uh, but don't need to bluff ace-king. Pocket nines on table two. Um, under the gun raise. We just call from the cutoff. I think that's fine, especially playing this deep. And we're going to go for a value bet on table four. River top pair. Uh, with just one over card and a backdoor straight draw. And having position on the razor, I think we're going to call once with nines.
Uh, I think the same goes for the turn, and possibly we can bluff rivers when it comes a club or a four. Uh, with the sixes, we're going to call on table four. And versus three barrel, we're just going to go ahead and fold the nines. Uh, definitely can make a case for folding turn if you're never planning on bluffing rivers. Um, but I don't mind bluffing rivers if I need to. This is just not one of them. The sixes, no need to bluff again here. We're four ways. We try to play straight forward. Yes, they check to us, so it's probably a little bit unlikely they have an ace. Um, but we're going to have so many better hands to, to bluff with. We're going to have four or five suited, three, four suited. Um, we're going to have some flush draws. We'll have a lot of chances to bluff, or we don't need to do that one. So back to this hand with the nines. Um, if I can shrink it up. So, um, on this board, yeah, I was just pretty much calling once because I had squeezed preflop. I was calling the flop because he's going to have some pocket pairs. He's also going to have uh, a hand like queen jack sometimes. Um, and on the turn, I'm just, when it check checks, I'm very happy to be checking Rivers to get the showdown. The Jack's just very bad uh, for my showdown value because a lot of his weird bluffs uh, make a pair. Or not weird bluffs, but Queen Jack makes a pair. And uh, sometimes he has a hand like Ace Jack. Let's see, we're going to three bet this one to $6. Table one, we go ahead and three bet. We're playing three handed. Uh, go ahead and three bet the button with nines and get the great flop middle set. Middle set. Uh, we're going to start off with a bet. Yeah, so anyway, we need to give Ace Jack a chance to fold, Queen Jack a chance to fold. I don't think he's ever really folding a king, but maybe he is occasionally because of my sizing. So I like the river, river over bet jam. Over on table three, versus Lemper, we're just going to pot it. We've talked about this earlier. Okay, so we're getting raised here. Uh, I think what we're going to do is just go for the call. And look to check raise some turns. I think this is a great turn to check raise because uh, sometimes we have hands that are clubs and we just want to turn them into a bluff that we may have called a, a raise with, like ace deuce of clubs. Or um, So all we need is for him to cooperate and go ahead and bet the turn, which he did for a good size there. And pretty, pretty easy shove for us now. I think he's got a real hand here uh, when he bets 20 into with only 36 back. Yeah, he had quite the real hand, <laughs> set over set. That's reasonable. Um, I did not expect him to have three queens. Perfectly fine that he did. Uh, quite unfortunate for us. Quite fortunate for me that it happened while doing a video. Uh, because I would believe in weird stuff like that. So maybe I won't get set under set in a 510 no limit game at the Bellagio. Because it will have just happened in a 25 cent, 50 cent game online. Um, and that was a misclick on table three. So now we're going to, uh, yeah, I, I would normally maybe try to buy my way out of it, but I'm going to just go ahead and give him the pot. Um, meant to fold the ace jack, just check fold on a board like this with no club, um, but misclicked. But yeah, uh, obviously that's not the way real life works, but uh, in my warped perception of poker and of life, you know, you only get set under setted so often, and uh, maybe it won't happen for a while now. King 10 offsuit from the big blind versus min raise, several calls. This is also a hand that plays terrible multi way, but we're getting two, four, six, seven to one. Um, you just got to flick it in for half a blind and uh, and hope to flop a, a straight draw or trips or. Or two pair and if you do happen to flop top pair just don't get super married or super involved 
uh, in the hand, super married to or super involved in the hand. This is also the same spot with the queen jack. Uh, I'm getting a discount. It's not great. I don't love it, but it feels a little bit too good to fold, even though I'm mostly going to be check folding a whole lot. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here with a limp and then a min raise, but I'm just going to fold the king jack off because it's another hand that, that plays pretty horribly. And that seems like some major shenanigans going on with a limp, then a min raise. Alright, just hit the 30 minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and take off the auto post blinds, play around to my big blind on all tables. And then we'll call it a video. Uh, hopefully there were some interesting spots. Um, I'm trying to keep these videos around 30 minutes, so... Uh, yeah, we'll see. It's tough. It's only so many f spots you can find in uh, when you're four tabling for 30 minutes. I wish WSOP had a um, like a, a zoom or zone or rush poke or whatever it's called. Um, if you're familiar with those on full tilt or on ignition or um, even on poker stars, where when you fold, the next hand immediately pops up. At least that way we can get through some some spots. But that's not the case. Uh, table two. I'm gonna isolate. Uh, table three, same thing, same principles apply where I could isolate. The thing is I'm not so much interested in isolating with pocket fours. I'm perfectly fine calling with fours, going multi-way to a flop and, and seeing what happens. With the queen six on table two, we isolate, get led into, and pretty easy fold for us. Ace-jack suited. We're going to go ahead and pot from the button and isolate. And fold the fours on table three. Um, not knowing these players, this is a pretty big three bet. I'm going to guess their ranges are pretty tight during the day. But for the sake of the video, I mean, calling can't be that bad when you have ace-jack suited. If we had ace-jack offsuit, this would definitely be a fold. I think ace-10 suited. Uh, maybe fold. And like some of my weaker broadways I could fold. I think ace-jack suited is probably just a little bit too good to be folding. Go ahead and float versus a half a pot bet with backdoor flush draw. With no spade on the board, I'll be folding. And then when he checks his turn, we're just going to be jamming. Uh, folding King Jack. If we were deeper, I just couldn't jam, but with those stacks, 32, 34, and I catch a gen turn card, I think that that's my only play. I'm not going to be able to show down ace-jack high. Um, so... You know, he had two queens there. That's perfectly fine. Uh, good job by him for checking turn. Um, you know, but also just gen card too, to, to give us the flush draw. Uh, he's going to be folding his ace queens and his ace kings. Um, but as I said, ranges are probably pretty tight in games like this during the day. So folding preflop can't be terrible. It just seems, seems a little nitty to be folding the... Ace-jack suited, and then it also seems nitty to be folding the flop for one bet, especially on, you know, such a ragged 6-2-3 where we're going to have all the pairs. He has none of them. Um, I think the turn, he just checks and folds a whole bunch. Uh, he's going to, we don't block any kings or queens. I think he just has king-queen a lot. Um, so I think it's perfectly fine. King Jack off from middle position or early middle position on table two. Yeah. Normally one spot, uh, one spot sooner than I would prefer to open it from, but with a poster in there, I think it's okay to just go ahead and open. On an ace high board, uh, with a straight draw, I'm probably going to lean towards a bet. Although his his stack is so short, but I just can't imagine that if I had an ace here that I wouldn't 
be going for value. As opposed to, though, I do expect that he would just call the raise with all aces in his hand, ace X, ace anything. But we get that one through. <laughs> And it looks like that's more or less going to wrap it up. Unfortunately, we never got a chance to use our random number generator here. Never really had any close spots. Uh, a little bit unfortunate to run nines into queens three-handed on the, the queen nine, uh, whatever the last card was. Queen nine flop. Uh, but that's poker. I mean, that happens. You just you can't dwell on that kind of stuff because uh, for every time... Somebody does it to you, you'll do it to somebody else later on down the line or in the past. And all those coolers just, uh, they just tend to even themselves out. So there's not much you can do about that. Um, no regrets with the ace jack hand that we got stacked on. Um, if I would have had a hand like ace king of spades, I would have checked back the turn as opposed to, as opposed to raising. I mean, as opposed to shoving, I would have checked back the turn. Um, because ace-king beats king-queen and ace-queen, and, um, obviously ace-jack beats king-queen as well, but ace-jack does not beat ace-king and ace-queen. So when we get a good turn like that and he checks to us, you just gotta go for it, guys. Sometimes you just gotta rip it in there and see what happens. Hope for the best. Um, but do it with equity. I mean, at least that hand, we had 12 outs going into the river. We had equity. Um, it wasn't the best. I'd rather him just fold, but, you know, equity's equity. Anyway, that'll be it for the video, guys. Hope you got something from it. Um, until next time, I guess, uh, check out Hand History Lounge, www.handhistorylounge.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.